my name is Chris Ganor. I'm the CEO of Challenger Exploration. I'll give a five minute overview of the company for first time investors, and then I'll give an update of our current drilling program in Walilan, which is um, producing some exciting results and we can't wait for assays. Uh, the cover photo there, that is our Walilan project in Argentina. And what you can't see is about 200 metres to the left of shock, there's a double lane sealed highway, and they're also putting in regional power lines about two k's from site. So great logistics for the project. Uh, so Challenger, two key projects. Walilan in Argentina, we're earning 75% of the project. Uh, historical resource of 627,000 ounces of high grade gold open in all directions. The results we've been getting since we started aren't really a surprise because it was locked up in a dispute and had seen no modern exploration for 15 years prior to us. You can see some of the historical results there. And um, you know, at the moment we've got five drill rigs on site and we found what looks to be a big intrusion hosted gold system sitting underneath the high grade scarn mineralization. We've got a couple of holes in it now. Our first hole 116 meters at 1.1 uh, grams and mineralization is open in all directions and the system looks like it will get a lot bigger. Uh, in Ecuador, uh, we're five kilometers along strike from a 17 million ounce ore body. We've got a regional scale footprint, 35 square Ks. Some great historical results there, which to be honest, I don't understand why they were never followed up. Uh, first thing we did when we got there was uh, ran a sort of regional geophysical program. If you're chasing porphyry systems as a junior and they're not near surface, you don't have a project. They're near surface and we have a project. And then the wild card for us was uh, a concession we picked up about six months ago as part of our sort of you know, regional expansion. Uh, some uh, local miners, they're backed with some Chinese investment. Uh, they're producing about 10,000 ounces a year of high grade gold from these narrow underground veins they're exploiting. Uh, we had a look at, they've drilled 60 holes chasing extensions. We had a look at uh, some of the core and thought, well, there's potentially a big bulk gold system around these veins. And uh, yeah, we've assayed the first eight holes now that they've never really assayed the bulk of. And there is a big bulk gold system there that we're on to as well. So Argentina first. Look, first thing, that historical resource, 13 and a half grams of 13.7 grams gold. The average grade of all the drill holes is about 10 grams a tonne gold equivalent. The, the, the work we've seen here historically is some of the poorest work we've ever seen. So when that resource comes out, please don't expect 13.7 grams. It's a high grade resource and it will be a high grade resource and it will be very profitable, but it's certainly not gonna go 13.7 grams. Uh, the historical drill holes there, that hole of 6.1 metres at 34.6 grams, that really tells the story of this ore body. That was a twin hole we drilled of a Canadian hole that got about 4 metres at 4. And then the Canadians drilled that a couple of years later when they realised core recovery was an issue and did get 6 in the mid-30s as well. And what the Canadians didn't realise is that it's not nuggety. Uh, the gold sits within and joining the pyrite. If you don't uh, get almost 100% core recovery, you're basically washing out the pyrite ahead of the drill bit and washing out the gold. We've subsequently twinned three or four holes that were drilled through what we thought were the centre of the ore body that didn't get anything historically. And in each one of those, we've got sort of, you know, ore grade uh, intersections of, you know, decent width. So, you know, really we're not smarter than everyone else. Uh, effectively, we're drilling outside of underneath the long strike of old Canadian holes that looked like they'd closed the ore body off because they just got poor recovery. Uh, we're in San Juan, tier one jurisdiction, sit on granted mining leases, which will be helpful when it comes time for permitting. And the other sort of near term catalyst, uh, the MET work that was done about 20 years ago, they were getting 80% of the gold and silver out into a gold silver concentrate. So, um, you know, that MET work, they used 150 micron grind. They'd never done the petrography. Uh, 150 micron grind was simply never gonna get all the gold out when you're talking about 30 or 40 micron gold. And also technology's moved on a lot in the last 20 years. So we hope, you know, we'll get the results back in a month. We're hopeful we'll do better than that 80%. The next slide is uh, a, it shows the high grade scar mineralization in 3D. You see the Magnata vein and the Sanchez vein. They're um, basically the sort of key structures that control the whole system. They're east-west regional faults. You stand on top of the hill, you can see these faults going 20 k's in both directions. What you've got is a sort of fluid source of depth. Uh, we think it's the porphyry system. The mineralization has come up, both of these sort of east-west faults, and you've got these fairly continuous veins, they call them five to 10 metres wide, you know, we've defined them over 500 metres of strike and they're open over a couple of hundred metres of, um, of depth extent. And then you've got sort of limestone sandstone shell units dipping out of the page 
and where the fluid comes up and falls and intersects these limestone units and there's open space, it then replaces out along the limestone bed with these you know, massive sulphide lenses along the bedding planes as well. And in terms of what we've done, centres in there, the stream right of page, we've pushed the mineralisation about 150 metres south. It now looks like centres in and Merchalira want to join up. We've got a hole there, hole 46, that went underneath centres in that went three metres at almost 30 grams gold. We pushed the Magnata vein 100 metres along strike in both directions, almost 100 metres down dip. We've got a hole in there that goes seven metres at 14, 60 metres below the uh, deepest drilling. Uh, we push the main manto in the sort of left of the page 100 metres into what we call the gap zone where there's just been no drilling. And we've also got a, a hole which is only the third or fourth hole ever in the Sanchez vein that went 27 metres at eight grams gold, silver and zinc, uh, which has all of a sudden become a main target. I mean, the, the bottom line here is you've got a system that a Canadian junior was poking in a number of holes under old adits and shafts chasing intersections. And this just needs pattern drill out. The other key feature here is that right down at the extreme southern end of Centazen is where the higher temperature mineral assemblage is. We think that's actually sort of the core of the system. So theoretically, take what you've got here to the left and then wrap around to the south again. You know, we get a lot of drilling in front of us and, you know, really we'll know how big this system is in six to 18 months, but it should be a lot bigger than 600,000 ounces. Um, this slide, I'll talk about the porphyry system underneath. You can see the high grade mineralization, the same loads there in gold. Um, you know, the, the purple there are the um, porphyry systems, um, you know, what we know of them to date. I mean, really we're limited by a lack of data. What we can, we've got some old drill holes there, some of our drill holes and really surface outcrop. I mean, the, the you know, previous explorers stopped drilling as soon as they got into the intrusives and never assayed them because they just didn't think they were um, carrying any mineralization. So what we've got is basically a, a system here in the gap zone. We've got a hole at either end of a one kilometre at strike that are both almost 100 metres at a gram. And you know, in this current program, this 45,000 metre program, we've been putting holes along here and you know, visually we're getting some great results that I'll talk about. Uh, we're waiting for assays now. But again, you know, look, the way this will work is, you know, we've really got limited control on these intrusives and certainly on the gold content within them. We'll sort of do this, I suppose, effectively a stratigraphic program. And then in stage two, we'll come back in and focus on some of these areas where we are getting the better grades in the intrusives. But certainly from what we're seeing, it is a really big intrusion, intrusion hosted system sitting under the high grade scar. And I'll just talk about, you know, the drilling progress at the moment on this 45,000 metre program. Um, you know, where we went is um, basically one rig on site to two rigs and for the last four weeks of this first seven and a half thousand metre program we had one rig. We've then stepped up to three, four and five rigs. And in terms of the assay cycle, two weeks to uh, basically log and cut and submit these cores for assay. And then really the time in the labs had blown out from three weeks to six, six weeks, which is, it's a worldwide problem. It's symptomatic of all the juniors having money. We've now got that back down to four weeks uh, by sw swapping labs. We've put on another three geologists and support staff. So we're getting our turnaround time from uh, basically drilling to logging and sampling to a week. And you know, as I said, the focus has been on the um, gap zone. You look at the right, you know, these holes are all pending assays, but what we're seeing is some broad zones that look very similar to the two holes that got you know, intrusive mineralization in them, and also some different styles of mineralization as well. And look, you know, on the right, you can see we fast tracked six holes, they're the holes in black, and then the blue holes that we've drilled more recently, and some of those look more exciting, and I'm probably being a little bit cheeky there, but look, from this first sort of 10,000 metres, there are gonna be a lot of drilling highlights here. We're desperately waiting for assays. My exploration manager's very excited, and normally I don't hear him excited and saying things like those two holes are a kilometre and a half apart. So, you know, we're waiting for the assay results now. Hopefully we'll get something in the next fortnight. So just to wrap up, at uh, Walilan in Argentina, our lead project, you're just at the point now where you're about to start to see the news flow that comes from five rigs. Number of the holes without having assays look really exciting. You know, a lot of them are better than 100 metre intersections. And, you know, many of those holes that were programmed to be drilled to 150 metres, we've ended up pushing to 300 metres or 250 metres because they look like they were drilling through mineralisation. With that porphyry, which you can see here is the pink on the right, the red is the high grade mineralization wrapping around that, the high grade scar. You've got to treat that porphyry in the context of a Fort Knox or Acadia Ridgeway style of system where it goes maybe a half a gram gold equivalent to 0.6. 
And where that is very significant is if you've got a high grade starter operation, yeah, which we'll have here, and then you've got this really big low grade system, you end up with a very long life, low cost operation where the high grade is paid for your plant. So it's a very profitable operation. Uh, in Ecuador, we've sort of started reassaying these historical cores now, five in for assay and uh, channel sampling them at added starting. So look, thank you very much for your time. And uh, anyone has any questions, please feel free to give me a ring or drop me an email. Thank you.